डॉक्टर योगेश वैद्य कंसल्टेंट जॉइंट रिप्लेसमेंट एंड ऑर्थोपेडिक सर्जन प्रैक्टिसिंग एट पिनाकल ऑर्थो सेंटर हॉस्पिटल थाने टुडे फ्रेंड्स आई एम हियर टू टेल यू अबाउट द वेरियस इम्प्लांट्स दैट वी यूज इन आवर हिप रिप्लेसमेंट सर्जरी वेन एवर अ पेशेंट कम्स टू अस फॉर अ हिप रिप्लेसमेंट सर्जरी दे फर्स्ट आस्क अस वॉट इम्प्लांट डॉक्टर इज गोइंग टू गो इन माई बॉडी for them we tell them uh, that there are various options which are available depending upon the age of the patient their demands of the patient and the disease of the patient so let us first understand the anatomy of our normal hip joint a hip joint is a ball and socket joint the articulation is formed between the head of the femur which is the ball and the socket or the acetabulum of the pelvis bone so there are different types of hip replacements primarily one is a partial hip replacement and one is a total hip replacement so what happens in a partial hip replacement in partial hip replacement we only replace the head of the femur so that is commonly known as a bipolar hemiarthroplasty so if you see this this is the prosthesis of a bipolar hemiarthroplasty in which you see this is a stem that goes in the femur this is the ball and this is the socket which is the articulating one which goes fits into the socket so if you see this this goes into the shaft of the femur and this sits into the acetabular cavity so in this case we don't replace actually the socket but we just use this uh, shell which goes into the socket so this is a partial hip replacement now next coming to the total hip replacement so as the name suggests total that means we both replace both the head of the femur as well as the socket or the acetabulum so in this also there are two types of total hip replacement depending upon the method of fixation which we use either it can be a cemented kind of a hip replacement or uncemented kind of a hip replacement so as the name suggests cemented total hip replacement that means we use some kind of a bone cement to fix the implant into your bones so the other option which is the uncemented one uncemented total hip replacement we have the prosthesis which are porous coated or there is a hydroxy apatite coating on the uh, implants so this is like a blasted sand paper you know which has got tiny holes inside so over a period of time bone ingrowths happen into this tiny porous uh, holes which helps in the fixation of the uh, implant so if you see the, coming to the uh, cemented total hip replacement this is a typical stem of a total hip replacement for cemented use it is as you see it is a very smooth uh, polished stem which goes into the femoral canal of the uh, patient and it is held in position with the help of a bone cement on the similarly on the socket side this is kind of a plastic uh, cup or a shell which is used which is fixed with the help of bone cement into the acetabular socket now on the other hand the uncemented hip replacement there is a porous coated as we seen but then again there are two types in this one is a fully coated if you see over here the stem is fully coated over here whereas the proximally coated one which is only the proximal part of the stem is coated so what is the difference between the two in fully porous uh, fully coated stem the entire surface is coated so the entire bone grows into the stem so if we have a future revisions then it becomes difficult as the entire uh, stem is fixed to the bone whereas in younger patients who may require future revisions we prefer to use this uh, only proximally coated stem because only this part of the uh, stem osteo integrates so it is easier to remove these stems rather than the fully um, porous coated stem similarly on the other um, hand uh, the shell which is there again this is porous coated so it has uh, got my tiny pores into it in which the bone grows as the implant is fixed during the surgery plus it has got holes for screw fixation so it gives added stability to the implant now after having understood these two type of implants let us come to the metallurgy or the metals which we use or the material which are used in making these implants broadly speaking there are two types one is a cobalt chrome which you see the metal uh, it looks like this and on the other hand there is a ceramic one which is made up of ceramic which looks like this pink uh, colored one now there is another type which is called as oxinium or oxidized zirconium which is black in color in this case there is a coating made on the uh, cobalt chrome material which gives this kind of a black color 
now the other types of stem which are there are the proximal small stem these if you see this the size of the stem is very small so again these are used in younger patients wherein we are contemplating future revision surgeries so the smaller stem the lesser chance of um, uh, bone destruction or bone uh, involvement in which happens in the later stage when patients come for revision now in special circumstances we use these long stems which are there these are really long stem they are used in special scenarios maybe in cases of fracture of the uh, femoral head or femoral neck when we use this in primary setting or mainly these are used for revision cases so what do you mean by revision cases revision cases are the ones in which the patient has been already operated once he has already undergone a total hip replacement but for some reason the implant or the surgery has failed and then he has um, uh, to undergo a second surgery so in this case we need a very long kind of a stem because in this case already the proximal part of the femoral canal is already the bone is very weak over there so we can't use these uh, implants so we have to use these special implants in this case so far what we have seen is the primary total hip replacement in which the hip replacement is done in a patient for the first time now coming to what is called as a revision total hip replacement so what happens in a revision total hip replacement the patient has already undergone a total hip replacement but unfortunately for some reason the hip replacement has failed now the commonest cause of failure of hip replacement is either it can be an infection or because of loosening of the implant now in case of infection if there is a patient is faced with a infection then it has to be either and the implant in the which is put in the patient's body in the first place has to be removed a thorough debridement has to be done maybe a antibiotic spacer is placed in situ till the time the patient gets uh, in, uh, intravenous or oral antibiotics till the time the patient's infection is completely eradicated and then in a second stage the revision t a total hip replacement is done in which a special implants are put in the patient's body or if there is a loosening of the implant maybe because of poor bonding of the cement or because of some other aseptic uh, loosening like cases like or because of osteoporosis there is a loosening of the implant then the patient has to undergo a secondary hip replacement or a revision total hip replacement now in these cases there are special implants which have to be used because what happens in cases of uh, failed implants there is the proximal femoral bone or the acetabular socket the bone quality of is already very poor there is a lo bone loss while removal of the previous implants so we have to use either these kind of a special long stem implants which will bypass the area of original fixation so these will take a hold in the diaphysis or the shaft of the femur or we can use on the acetabular side large jumbo cups which will help in fixation of the acetabular socket in the whatever the available bone is there so these are little costlier implants these are very uh, these require different skill sets in, uh, and training for implantation so lastly friends i would like to emphasize here that the technology has definitely come a far way than what had started off uh, long back when the total hip replacement had started but most important is the technique of the surgery we have to remember that this total hip replacement or for that matter any arthroplasty is a very specialized surgery it requires very special operation theater setups and um, equipments for the um, uh, performing them in a proper way that so that they last for long time uh, this is the answer to the patient's question that how much years that it will last in the patient's body to uh, summarize we can say that the implant the newer implants which are there that is the ceramic or oxygenium they can last up to 20 years to 25 years but most important is the technique in which they have done if the technique is proper then even the ordinary implants or the metal implants can also give good results or even the cemented implants can good result give good results so friends the technique is more important than the technology doing a good job in a good setup at a in good pair of hands and using the good quality imported implants definitely helps to uh, the implant to survive longer in the patient's body so i hope friends this uh, small video might be useful to you in understanding whatever the different options we have in terms of the uh, cemented or the uncemented ones whatever different metal options we have like the um, uh, cobalt chrome or titanium or ceramic or uh, oxygenium 
if in case you have any still you have any doubts or any clarifications you require i am always available at pinnacle ortho center hospital thank you friends and goodbye